straight. So, you, to measure the melting point of the aspirin that we made, what I'd like to do is just put a little sample of that aspirin onto a watch glass like so. Top back on that one. Um, and I'm just going to use the, the edge of the spatula just to make sure that that's nice and powdered down so that there's no big lumps of aspirin there. And the reason that that's important is that my next task is to get that sample into this tiny little capillary tube. So this is just a piece of glass tubing with a sealed end at one end and an open end at the other end. And now this is obviously incredibly fragile and any sort of knocks or twists or whatever will cause this to shatter and it's really sharp when that happens. So I'm just gonna very carefully do it like this. So I'll take the watch glass and I'll just tap the edge of this melting point onto it. And if I just tap the edge of this melting point tube into that sample, we start to get a little depth of the sample at the top of the tube. If I just give that a little tap on the desk, that would just gradually start to move down the tube. Now this is an exercise in patience, so if you'd like to come back in a few moments when I've got this sample in place, then we'll do the next bit. So now I've managed to get the sample into the capillary tube and I've probably got about a centimetre depth or something like that at the bottom. The next thing I'd like to do is attach the capillary tube to the side of the thermometer. Now to do this safely, one way to do this is to use some small pieces of um, rubber tubing as almost like little elastic bands and to attach the tube onto it. But because of this kind of notch in the thermometer, what I found before is that actually if you do that with it against the straight edge of the thermometer first, then the capillary tube is much less likely to smash and then move the whole thing down. So I'm just going to take that little piece of rubber tubing and supporting the tube next to it, as with all glassware that people add to um, rubber tubing, etc., just slide that on like that. And do the same over the other end of it. So go and take another piece of that rubber tubing, again supporting the glassware nicely, and just move that rubber tubing down um, and to, to just catch the end of that um, little capillary tube there. So I'm just moving it down carefully, moving it down carefully, and then I just need to stretch it over the top carefully, a bit fiddly, um, just like that. Now that I've got both of those um, little rubber bands on here, I can just very carefully and gradually move that down so that the end of the capillary with the sample in it is at the same place as the bulb of the thermometer. I need to be really careful with this thermometer, it's a mercury thermometer. We need a mercury thermometer because we need the, the temperature range to be high enough for this experiment. But of course this has got mercury in it, so if the thermometer breaks, then mercury gets exposed and, and we have some very strict procedures that we have to follow for that. So if anything goes wrong with this, it's important to just let the teachers know straight away. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do then is just pop this into here. This thing here is called a filet tube and I'm going to just sit that in there. Now I can see that that thermometer is going to need um, a little bit of support from a clamp and, um, and boss, so I'm just going to go and get one of those and clamp it in place carefully. Now hopefully what you can see here is we've got this clamped in place. At this side there is the sample tube um, and that's got the aspirin in it and it's right next to where the bulb of the thermometer is. Now the heating happens just here on the filet tube and what happens here is that the oil gets hot and then convection currents take it round and so that just allows the even heating really and gradual heating. So the aim for the melting point determination is to heat this fairly strongly but then when you get close to the suspected melting point heat really slowly so that you can record the start of that melting process and the end of that melting process. That's the point at which the first drop of liquid appears at the start and where the last crystal just disappears at the end. You can get that, that range as narrow and as accurate as you can. Okay, so heat fairly strongly, but then around the melting point, heat slowly to allow the starting and the ending point of that melting point range to be determined. It's sometimes a good idea to have on standby for example, a magnifying glass so that you can keep a closer eye on those crystals and see what's happening. So what I will do now is start heating this oil over here, this edge. 
and I will keep my eye on what the sample is doing as well. So we're fairly close to the expected value for the melting point here, so I've just slowed down that heating now, keeping a really close eye on when the first drop of liquid appears in this tube, which it hasn't quite been yet. seems to be just doing yeah just now so the starting value 137 degrees C 137 and then I'm watching this really carefully still a few crystals in there still one or two crystals and that seems to have gone completely now so that's 139 degrees C.